Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Topaz Studio 2 and I'm showing how to use and hopefully master the brush masking capability. It's really powerful. It's really awesome. But I have to admit, sometimes I get a little confused and I've used this tool for a long time, but it still gets a little bit confusing to me because I feel like they do masking a little bit differently than other people and other products that I've used. I was working with a client recently and he had questions about how the brush masking worked and I just thought, you know, Maybe you have questions too. So this video is my attempt, if you will, to help you figure out how the brush masking works in Studio 2 and help you master it so you can you know, be able to precisely use brush mask to control how your images look. So let's get going. I'm in Studio 2, here's my photo. I've added a basic adjustment and a brightness and contrast adjustment just to basically get the photo started. So that was my before, that is my current state. Now I'm gonna go add a precision detail. And what I wanna do is I wanna use brush masking to get the detail into the uh, distant mountains and also in these rocks in the foreground. So I'm gonna add precision detail. I'm gonna go to like 0.4 or something like that. And now I wanna get into masking. But you'll notice when I add that, it's applying globally. The entire photo is being impacted and that's where brush masking comes in. So to get into masking, you just hover over the filter and you click on this little icon here. Looks a little bit like a Japanese flag. If you hover long enough, the text will come up and it says add a mask to this layer. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna click on that and it opens this little window here with some uh, icons, tools, and this rectangle that's white. We are gonna talk only about the brush mask, so I'm gonna click on that and get started. Now the key thing about masking to remember, this is the masking mantra, if you will, and that is white reveals, black conceals. Just remember, white and black. White reveals, black conceals. That will get you through a whole lot of problems with masking, trust me. So what that means is reveals means it'll show up in your photo, conceals means it won't show up in your photo. So we're gonna reveal and conceal some of this precision detail in this photo using a brush mask. So this uh, white rectangle right here is your masking window. It represents your photo and all it is gonna show you is where your mask is being applied. It's white because white reveals, that's right. Um, it, in other words, it means it's revealed currently across the entire photo. That precision detail adjustment that I made is showing everywhere. We don't want that. I don't want that. Um, I only want it in those distant mountains and in that foreground. I don't like detail in my skies and water. I like them to be kind of smooth. So we're gonna get rid of those by using the brush mask. So I clicked on brush. You've got a couple of things to be aware of here. The first thing to be aware of is your radius. So you can adjust the size of your cursor by adjusting the radius. I'm gonna go with kind of a big one like that. Um, you can also adjust the softness, which um, if you look now, that inner circle is a whole lot smaller because the softness is higher. And I'm gonna go like to the left, I'm gonna move it back up here. You can see that inner circle, which is red, and the outer circle, which is green, are a lot closer together. So basically, all that is is the uh, harder brush, which this is a hard brush because um, there's very little space between those two circles. It just means the fall off is very abrupt from where you're masking and where you're not masking. Whereas, if your softness is more like this, your fall off is very gradual. So I tend to leave softness somewhere in the middle and sometimes go a little bit higher. For this photo and this edit, I'm gonna leave it kind of in the middle. Um, and then edge aware, you can either have that on or off. I recommend on. One of the great things about Topaz Studio 2 is that they have edge aware masking, as you can see here, which, as the name implies, means it is aware of edges, which is gonna help you when you're masking along surfaces where there's contours and things like that. It's gonna help your mask be a little bit more accurate than you're probably gonna be on your own. Okay, so here's the fun part. Let's do some masking. So um, I've got white, which means it's showing everywhere. This is the key thing right here for Studio 2 for brush masking, and that is your mask brush transparency. This is a big deal because that is currently black and this uh, rectangle is white. So what that means is, because this rectangle is white, this detail that I applied is everywhere, and the mask brush is black, which means that is gonna erase it. I'm gonna add black, I'm gonna conceal this precision detail adjustment wherever I paint, and that's exactly what I wanna do. So I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna paint that uh, blackness, if you will, in there, and you'll see my masking window on the right now has a section that's all black, 
I'm gonna adjust the size of my uh, cursor and fix the softness a little bit. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come over here and just do the exact same thing where I come and I paint in more black. I'm concealing it from the water. I could then come and do the same thing across the sky. And I'm doing a really sloppy quick job here, folks, just to get the point across about how it works. But you can see in this masking window a rough approximation of where my mask is. Black conceals. So if you look at that, that looks like the sky and the water are concealing or hiding or not showing that detail adjustment. And it looks like the distant mountains and the foreground are showing. Uh, they're revealing because they're white. And that's exactly what's happened. So that's how it works in a nutshell. Basically, the default is that this rectangle is white and your brush is black, which means the adjustment you've made is everywhere on the photo and you've got to go erase it. But what if you prefer to do it the other way where you just want to paint it in and you don't want it showing on the whole photo? You can do that as well. Let me show you that. Okay, we're back. I just reset this tool. Here's precision detail, same adjustment at, at 40 or whatever it was. And hey, Jim, this is still white and black, and it is. And what we're talking about here is that's the default, right? It defaults to being white and you erase it. But if you want to do the other way, you want the default up here to be black and you want to paint it in, then you just click on these three little dots on this masking window and you click invert and you will see this uh, little masking window has now turned to black, which means that detail adjustment is concealed and you can tell it's not showing up anywhere. However, when you click on brush, your brush is showing black as well. So this is where um, I used to get confused and I think it confuses people because you have to change the masking brush transparency because remember, everything is black. So if you're in here trying to erase with this black brush on top of this black um, concealed edit, nothing's going to happen because black on black doesn't show or erasing something that isn't there doesn't do anything. So what you want to do is change this transparency and go to completely opposite other end and make that fully transparent uh, at 1.0. Um, and now my masking brush is white, which is, hey, this is painting in on a black rectangle. So now I just come in and I find the little spots that I want to paint it into. And then I just rub my masking brush around here and I'm going kind of quick and sloppy and all that, but uh, just trying to get the point across. And um, there you go. I've painted that detail adjustment and you can see it hitting the mountains. And now I want to do the same thing. I want to paint it down here in the uh, foreground. So I'm going to skip her by the lake and I'm just going to get most of this uh, foreground except for the lady there or the young girl, I guess, whatever she was. Um, there you go. You can see that applying. Now, to be clear, that's too much detail. I, I did it that much just so you can visibly see in a video. I don't recommend doing a whole lot of detail because it can start to kind of uh, almost hurt your eyes, for lack of a better word. So, But that's how you do it. You can either, by default, allow it to apply the edit across the entire photo and erase it where you don't want it, or you come down here, invert the mask, and then you paint it in where you do want it by changing the transparency of the masking brush from black to white so that you can paint it in. Remember, white reveals, black conceals. So that's how masking works in a nutshell. Now there's a couple of other things to be aware of. You can come in here and you can copy this mask and then use it on another tool or another filter. So I could copy this mask, click those three buttons, click on copy, and now I'm gonna go get another tool. And let's say I get precision detail again. And this time I'm gonna take small details to the left and medium details to the left and basically just soften up the photo because what I want to do is I added detail selectively to the mountains and the foreground. Now I want to come in and I want to add softening to the sky and the water. And again, I'm overdoing it here. I'm exaggerating on purpose, but you um, copied the mask from the last layer. Now I click here and I come down here to these three dots and I click paste and there you go. It's now pasted. However, Remember, the mask was applying to the, the hard surfaces, right? The rock in the foreground and the rock in the distance. I want to flip that or flop that, and so I need to invert that. So there you go. I invert, and now my mask is the opposite. My mask is applying just to the sky and water. Now that you see that, you can come in here and click on brush, and you might think, yeah, but now my tree is all soft, and that's true. So I'm going to take the radius down really small, maybe something like that. And remember, I'm on black, so that's erase. And I'm just erasing that softening from that tree. 
and I'm gonna come up here and do the same thing. And I'm gonna do kind of a sloppy job just because I'm in a hurry and I'm gonna get some of these little branches here as well. And basically what I've done is I copied the mask from the previous uh, where I added detail, I pasted it here and then I inverted it so that I could remove detail in the sky and water. And then I was able to come in and do some customization to this mask. So you're not stuck with a mask once you add it uh, you know, or edit it or whatever, you can go back and change it if you would like to, such as I did here, by removing that softness from the tree. And there's one more thing to be aware of that comes in super handy when you're using brush masks, and that's this little um, button over here that says Adjust. So if you click on that, you've got some options here. You've got feathering for your mask. Feathering is basically softening the edges and making that transitional zone kind of softer, right? So if you look at my masking window, you can kind of see how that's getting softer there as I drag the feathering to the right. So that's one tool. Um, you can leave um, edge aware feathering on so that when you do this softening, it's picking up the edges and adjusting accordingly. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of idea how that operates. I'm gonna reset that and down here, I wanna look at expand mask. So expand mask, as the name implies, is literally just gonna expand the mask. It's gonna make it take up more space. As you can see, as I drag it to the right, the black area is shrinking, which means the white is growing. The white is the mask, so it's taking up more space. Whereas if I go the other way, you're gonna see the black area got a little bit bigger. So that allows you to expand the mask. It's not gonna go and take over the whole photo, but if you got kind of close and you wanted to expand the mask a little bit, it can come in handy to help you kind of grow where you've masked some with your brush. Contrast does a great job of just kind of crisping up some of these edges. And so as I drag this, if you look at my masking window, you can see hopefully um, how this is kind of crisped up around the edges, which in a photo like this, where I have a very big difference between the edges, like hard rock and then soft sky, you know, hard rock and then softer water, the uh, contrast can come in really handy to help those edges get a little bit crisper. And then density is basically the transparency of the, or the opacity of the pixels that are outside of the masked area. So as I drag this to the right, remember the mask is the white area. You'll see as I drag this to the right, the mask, the white area is taking over more and more of the photo. So it's basically a way to kind of blend your mask into your photo. I don't recommend going this far. Usually it's just a little bit you wanna do, but I'm pointing out here, if I go all the way to the right, you can see that it's really the mask of the softening because we're on the negative precision detail here. That softening is applying across more and more of the photo. And the opposite is true as well. If I go left with the density, you can see how that's impacting the photo. The areas where the masking has occurred, which were white, are now gray. So they're kind of uh, less transparent. So it's kind of softening that up. So it's basically a way to help blend your mask into your photo. Honestly, it's not something I use that often, but it can come in handy. But um, I like the contrast here, especially. So when you're ready and you want to accept that, you can just hit apply and you're finished. And that is how you do brush masking in Topaz Studio 2, my friends. Hope it gives you some uh, tips or some ideas about how it works. But the key thing for me is really remembering what color is this rectangle and therefore is your masking brush the opposite color because that's gonna indicate whether you're painting in or erasing from. So just keep that in mind, that's a key trick, I think. But the bottom line, like anything, is practice, practice, practice. Just get in there, play around, and uh, you'll get this in no time, I'm sure. It's, it's quite easy, it's very powerful, and it's incredibly useful. That's how brush masking works. Hope it helps you master that tool and get really comfortable with it. Thank you for watching, my friends. Have fun editing. Take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you soon, and adios.